Hi, Aaron. Thanks for joining me, friend. Thanks, Ashton. So I've been looking forward to this for a while. Uh, looking forward to this conversation. I think we've been mutuals on Twitter for at least three years, maybe four. And um, yeah, it's been very interesting to watch your journey through that lens and want to dive deeper into your life and how you see things, how you see the world. I'm especially curious about how you see language, and I imagine we'll spend quite a bit of time talking about that. But to kick us off, I'd love to hear from you. Same question I ask everyone. What is your life story? What's happened to you so far in your life? Whatever you'd like to share about that, I'd love to hear. Yeah, so that's a great question. Um, so I grew up, uh, I'm from Wisconsin originally, a few different cities around there. Um, and grew up like very evangelical Christian. So that's kind of like my, my background. Um, and religion was like a huge, huge part of my life for like most of my life, um, like through college. And I, it was just like this very kind of earnest relationship to Christianity. Um, and that was like one of the primary, like, I don't know, ways like I expressed something in my life and um, was in touch with something. So I, I, uh, I don't know, in terms of like life chapters, like that was kind of like the background. Um, there was a, and they got expressed in a few different areas, like earnestly. So like the church at home, um, the summer camp that I worked at growing up, uh, like in high school and a few summers in college. Um, and then this college ministry I was a part of. Um, and there was kind of this, just this intensity to it that I brought, that I loved. And it was um, kind of an, a, a great avenue to explore life and faith and questions like that. Um, so, yeah, I, 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 I view kind of like the major chapters in my life as like the kind of Christian chapter, the kind of post whatever chapter, and then the kind of like kind of putting the pieces back together chapter, which I'm in the midst of right now. Um, so, so those are like the kind of major movements, I suppose. And there's other systems that work with those, like my kind of relationship to school or kind of like capital S society or whatever that means. Um, I don't have like any strong threads to follow up on there, but um, I'm probably, I mean, I, I, yeah, I don't know. Um, so if you've got any like questions that would be like, or areas of life that'd be interesting to touch on, that'd be, that'd be good. But that's like, that's, that's, that's like a major kind of theme in my life has been like engagement with religion. And that's been like at least one of the main pockets hmm. that's been important. How would you describe your disposition as a kid? Um, Generally pretty, pretty, like both happy, but like kind of introverted. Um, like I like people a lot, but I spent a ton of time reading and like, I forget about this now, but I spent like most of my time reading as a kid. Um, you know, I, I did other stuff too. Like we grew up like kind of next to this farm. So we got this farm all the time playing around. Um, but I spent a lot of time reading just like lots of sci-fi fantasy, um, the Bible, nonfiction books stuff on economics, whatever, just everything. Um, so that was, that was like, at least like through middle school, just like constantly reading. Um, and then high school, I think I, I kind of got the, the, the camp I went to and the camp that I worked at was like, where I really like found ways to express myself, like in that community. Um, and just got like lots more extroverted during that time. Uh, same with college. I think like the, the Christian group there was like a really like good social kind of opportunity for me. Um, and just kind of really leaned into like, how much can I organize this group? How can I engage with it? How can I play with, play with it, play with people here? When you were in the thick of your first chapter of life, this Christian chapter, how did you relate to God and Christianity and your faith? Um, yeah, it's a good question. It just seemed like I didn't really question anything. Uh, I mean, I did constantly, but like, it was just this very open hearted kind of earnest questioning. So I wasn't really like concerned with, um, 
I don't know, pushing boundaries too much. I, I just was like, oh, this is a thing. It is true enough. And um, I'm going to explore kind of like what an earnest expression of this looks like. So I was always like, I, I was really into like music, really into like um, poetry. I wrote a lot of poetry um, into kind of like pushing the boundary of like, oh, like how can we make this more real? Or like how can we kind of like get to the real meat of what's happening? So I was always frustrated by, I, I don't know, like people who would go to like a Bible study and then they'd be like, yeah, 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 that's the thing. And they just go home and like, if this is real, like it should be like awesome. And like, we should be pushing this and like testing it and like trying to figure out like how the hell this works and um, who is God and like, how do you push against the world? And he responds and you know, what happens as we obey or disobey or, you know, whatever. Um, so it was, it was uh, kind of this like, I don't know, like a spiral just kind of like, pushing against the walls of whatever this thing was and trying to figure out what it was made of and and where it was rooted and, and how how it was constructed. Um and and what is like know, creative engagement look like. Like there were a few years where I kind of I organized like worship at with one of the groups and um just was like trying to bring I don't know, what I thought were more honest songs into the mix more kind of like earnest prayers or more kind of earnest like you know what's like really happening like how can we kind of like engage in the mystery of you know the resurrection or the, the you know the whatever kind of christian thing together what moved you out of that chapter um yeah it's a good question so i uh i kind of like had like this logical framework in my head of like why things made sense so i was kind of like hanging on to and uh it was mostly resting on like the resurrection i was like this seems logical like there are a bunch of like apologist historical arguments that make sense if you get that then the new testament kind of makes sense and the old testament kind of makes sense and history kind of makes sense and we're in history and this it's all kind of adds up um so i remember uh one night that i was uh it was like in college like at the end of college um and i had like had all these weird feelings come up in in those environments since uh, or in the, the year leading up to this moment i was like none of this seems real what's going on like why is why does this not the thing anymore um or like just kind of this like worrying that i was going to fall out of it so there's one moment in particular where i was like on the couch and i was like not able to fall asleep so i was just googling stuff uh, and i was like i want something that'll help me fall asleep so i googled like you know basic proof of historical resurrection apologist whatever argument read something from C.S. Lewis or somebody. And I was like, okay, that's cool. I think I can fall asleep now. Um, and then I realized, or as I was kind of closing the lid of my laptop, I was like, wait a second. I wonder if anybody has ever in history ever written a rebuttal to an argument like this. So then I Googled a rebuttal to whatever. And I spent the next like six months reading and figuring out history and like what was going on. Because it turns out lots of people have written lots of things and rebuttals and um tried to figure stuff out so so that was kind of the inroad to a lot of the stuff i'm into now um in terms of like how do like new things come into history how what like types of people are the people that speak those things into the world um how are they kind of woven together or breaking from what was here before how does that relate to like how we hold tension and conflict as people uh with in ourselves or within groups um how do we what what's good like how do you how do you move through the world in a good way kind of with respect to all that kind of that kind of stuff so um yeah at the, at the end of that period this is like a theme that has come up quite a bit from this is like something that feels really important is like resolving dichotomies and like kind of breaking your mind against them until something interesting happens so there was this like, I, I don't know, the last like several years has been this series of dichotomies that I've just been throwing myself at to, just because that's what's in me or in my world or whatever. And that one at the time when all that stuff was changing with respect to my kind of earnest, more naive view of Christianity was this like, it has to be one or the other of these two things. Like it has to be all true or it has to be all, um, or like the rest of the world has to be true. So I was in this progressive, you know, big state university kind of thing, uh, which is very different from the isolated small Christian 
cult like group I was in. Um, so, so, so the way I found resolution, like I, I saw people who like did the whole, like, I'm rejecting Christianity thing now, or like I'm staying in Christianity and rejecting the world. And neither of those were attractive. Um, so I, I remember this one moment where I was journaling about this and I was on the floor of my apartment in my bedroom. And I was like, okay, like, I'm just going to surrender to like, whatever this mystery is. And, you know, said Jesus at the time, because that's like, how am I going to surrender? And I'm just going to like, hold on to both of these things. Like all the true things I've experienced and known from within this and all the stuff that also is true that I've experienced elsewhere and read, you know, about, and I'm just going to like walk forward with like holding on to both these things with some kind of degree of uncertainty and tension of opposites. And I think that's a really powerful thing to do um, in a lot of ways because it it like does something to you. It's like does some kind of like alchemy on your mind and it changes how you relate to the world um, and how the world, like what kind of things you move towards. Um, so yeah, I, uh, yeah, that's what I got. You said a lot of feelings were coming up at that time about these questions and this dichotomy. Do you remember what that felt like emotionally? Uh, yeah, like there was like um, a lot of anger that like the people um, like, you know, either either Christian people or people outside who I'd kind of looked up to as like providing scaffolding or structure in the world. It was like, oh, like you're not actually taking seriously everything that exists in the world. And this is, this is dumb. Like this is, this, you, we are operating in a small slice of reality versus like the whole of everything we can know and touch. Um, so there was some anger. There was a lot of like grief. Uh, like I, it, there was a few times where it literally felt like God had died and I had to like, I was, you know, terrified, you know, naked on the surface of this rock in space. And was like, oh, what the hell is going on? It's just like some kind of, dark night kind of stuff um so uh, yeah like anger grief terror uh lots of intensity mm -hmm. awe you know at mystery of stuff um yeah the the it was funny like after i um had that moment where i was like i'm not gonna you know choose i'm gonna hold both um i just started saying yes to a lot of stuff in life that i'd never said yes to um, so that's a, a month or two after that, I decided to hitchhike across the country and a, a, a two months between jobs, between a software job and a research job I had at the time. Um, and I, I had always wanted to do that. Like someone told me a story about them hitchhiking across the country, you know, when I was like eight years before when I worked at them at this camp and it was like, you know, you have to do this, you have to do this, you have to do this. So I, I went to the road, I, you know, got a tent, I got a backpack, went to the road and I stuck my thumb out. And then, you know, two months later, I find myself back at the same place with a you know, whole bunch of stories and stuff happening at the time. Um, so that was that was like one kind of I don't know, creative act that like emerged from that kind of freedom or intensity of reconciling that. But yeah, so lots of emotions, lots of kind of feeling of there's there's also a lot of. Um, I don't know, a sense of like disconnect from people. And that was like a theme too, because like it's, it feels like I've fallen out of things a lot in my life, um, and like that's okay. I think it's been good because it's like there's a desire to restructure. You need to restructure your relationship to them, but um, just this kind of sadness of like, oh, like I'm very alone in the path I'm taking, especially among people I had known. So like there was moments of like very like there's this very interesting boundary I think between self and other or like group and other or like people enforce boundaries of like ah like you are in us or like i'm kind of there's this undercurrent of like you are not in this anymore if you choose to believe this kind of thing so there was a lot of that and a lot of like ah you're maybe not threatening me but just kind of like you are declaring that i'm no longer something that i used to be that would have us be in some kind of relationship um with either you know pastor type people or friends or whoever um because there's some sort of like there's some sort of thing in um that group i was in which could not hold the tension that i was trying to hold so if it felt you were trying to hold more tension that it could hold that people could hold it kind of has this pushing kick you out kind of mm. effect 
so that's that's i'd say that's pretty major too like the sensation of like moving out of a group because it's like oh there's something else happening now and in the height of that period how did you see the world um uh yeah everything was like true and everything was like very like bright and alive and like sparkly and magical and poetic um i remember having lots of conversations i lived with a bunch of christian guys at the time and i was like no you guys don't get it like literally everything's true like you don't have to reject anything it's all like it's all just true you know and these are just structures you know rather than you know if you're comparing like religions like christianity hinduism or buddhism i was like these are just structures there's not like doesn't even make sense to like say is this true or false like because that's a frame that's going to put you in some kind of weird relationship to like reality if you do that um and of course they just thought it was very weird and like didn't belong anymore you know kind of like what are you talking about it doesn't make sense things are true and like you know, to some extent i would say i'm more more in touch with that now um but it was i don't know there's a lot of excitement a lot of like ah this is awesome like you know you don't actually have to hold all this Tension, you can just kind of accept everything and like just navigate whatever reality is. You don't have to reject large swaths of it for being out of doctrine or something like that. Hmm. And how did this third chapter start to emerge, putting the pieces back together? Um, well, there was a lot in between, and I think more things had to fall apart first. Um, um, so I... I Eventually, I, I ended up dropping out of school in my last semester, uh, midway through. That's when the pandemic hit. Um, and uh, that felt like another kind of rupture, similar to like leaving Christianity, leaving university, leaving whatever track I was on before, just, you know, software or, you know, some kind of academic research thing. Um, so... Yeah, like I, I spent a few years after that uh, working like carpentry, building houses, building apartment buildings, um, traveling around, meeting a bunch of Twitter people. Um, and then, uh, yeah, and then there was uh, a whole like that same thing happened again, but with family. It was like, oh, no, there's stuff I have to deal with in terms of like my relationship with family. This is another bubble that's kind of pushing me out. And that was about two years ago now. Um, so the last two years have kind of been this chaotic mess of figuring out what is reality, what is the psyche, what is my mind doing on a deeper level, what is my relationship to anything um, happening? How do you, how do I kind of navigate the the, the world in some sense? Um, yeah, I and mean, I think just following that earnestly led earnestly led to like. Uh, now, like the kind of lines are lining back up. So if there's kind of like these bubbles you fall out of, it's like, ah, maybe nothing catches you or maybe some things catch you or maybe some friends catch you. And it's like, ah, now you can get kind of reconstruct some kind of some kind of new thing, which is, you know, uh, similar shapes to the old bubbles. How did your family take it as your relationship to the faith changed? Oh, I didn't really tell them about that. Oh. Um, I figured that would be an awkward conversation. Over <laughs> uh, or I was worried, you know, they would they would be mad. Um, so I mostly avoided it. They kind of figured it out. Like, I, you know, talked about things differently. Or they're like, my mom would say things like, you used to be such a good person or you used to, you know, have such a good heart. What happened to you? And I don't know. I was like, all right, thanks, mom. <laughs> Sorry um, to laugh. That's uh, <laughs> dark humor, I suppose. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Can you say more about this? Um, these new structures that are sort of shaped like the old structures? Yeah, so um, I don't know. I think the last two years for me has been this like process of kind of like literally everything. Like I, I, I view like mind as existing in like pockets and there's like pockets of mind like we are i would say we're in a pocket of mind because we're both kind of people on twitter and a certain group of people and there's like something kind of holding that together uh so like likewise there's something holding together like people who live in a geographical area or people who kind of like went to the same college or kind of 
all graduated college or um, all work a similar job or these kind of bonds or like go to the same church that's like a smaller tighter knit one or the same kind of denomination or live in the same family it's like there's this kind of like stickiness that like keeps minds within like those structures of mind and when you do some kind of like boundary crossing or when there's like this gradient like force gradient kind of pushing you out like as you integrate more than that mind can hold and it you learn that like, oh, this is, there's something kicking me out of this place or pushing me somewhere else. Um, it's like, that's kind of how I, I, like, there's this like, that's kind of how I view those structures. Um, and I think there's like places in you that those structures hook into, which is like how you can bond with them at all or be a part of them. So there's like the shape of the structure that is like maybe capital S society or the shape of the structure that is family or the shape of the structure that is uh, like, the friend group you're a part of that you're all bonded together by like the Christianity and stuff. So as you like, there's this kind of like unhooking from those things and like internal reorganization of like how you can even be hooked into and what type of like things you can relate to. Um, so I, yeah, I, I think in like the kind of going away and reconfiguring yourself process, like it, it, it the, places you want to relate to the bigger structures are still there and the ways you can hook into them. But the, the shape of the connection is different. It's like, you know, a bolt versus a screw or like, you know, you've got like just maybe like some kind of metal plate that's kind of bolted in some way versus Velcro or whatever. So, um, yeah, it, it seems like those are all kind of still there and there's some like way of relating to the world. that's good to be relating to things, you know, just the things that you are supposed to relate to. Um, so, uh, yeah, I think, I think there's, um, I think I relate to those things maybe with like some more like inner security or inner strength now than I, I did before. I was like relying on them to provide something that I'm not anymore. So it feels like it can be a cleaner relationship with more devotion to something than some order than there was um and there's also like just different structures it feels like i'm serving now like there's um not a desire to become a pastor anymore in that you know tradition or that kind of church um but there's like a desire to kind of serve society in some broader more kind of whole sense um than that like smaller kind of structure would have allowed What are some of the things that um, you think are good to relate to that you've found yourself reconnecting to or finding more wholesome connections with? Yeah, um, I think friends are great. Um, I think like I've been learning like what kind of friendships I really value and like who, like what type of people are just like, I don't know, there's just, there's, there was a bunch of, there's like people I found when I kind of fell out of stuff that were very different from the people I was relating to before. And there was some quality of like the people I ended up becoming friends with like in the last year and a half or two, um, which feels like they, they had some kind of ability to hold mind, like hold your mind together, or hold like kind of like, ah, you're not slipping, like we're fine. I don't have to reject you because you're, you know, you're in some other place than me, whatever. Um, so yeah, like those kind of uh, friendships uh, feel really good. Um, I... I think like some more like personal relationship to the divine um, and like creative, like my person, my, my relationship was always personal and creative, but it's, it's, it's more kind of like uh, agentic now or more, more determined by me. And like, I have more ability to hold myself in relationship to structures. So, like sometimes I'll go to Catholic church. Sometimes I'll talk to trees. Sometimes I'll, you know, just do whatever feels good. Um, and I think, yeah, and then like I think um, what I'm building for towards is like just having some kind of project in society. I think that's like takes into account all the stuff I've learned, like career direction or whatever. And it's like, oh, it's important to kind of contribute uh, in this way. And it's not like it's from less of a frame of like I, I think I need to make a lot of money uh, than like oh I have something I'm trying to like build in the world, and I would like to do it on the level of this kind of structure that just is what's available mm. so yeah 
how did you your interest in language and words and speech start to develop yeah um so that was kind of uh coincident with like the christian stuff that was like all the maybe the preliminary material for that to kind of happen was like the how my whole epistemology changed during like that time period when i was uh, asking those questions um and like seeing like those kind of moments in history when i was reading a lot of history when like new things come in it's like oh there's some something inspired happening here something important um so I, i've got a lot of diagrams of different cones and uh you know angles and sheets of things it's like this is whatever the structure is and this is how it relates to the structure um in a, in a similar way to like what is that line in a group where like it will start to push you or it will you know can't hold you or, or ask you to change um so that was kind of like the background it's like okay what's what's like happening in the world and what are like these forces kind of occurring um and then like 2020 like right before the pandemic i was sitting in my research lab at the time uh working late and writing an email and um i remember uh i had like i got done writing this email and then i i was like wait a second like i'm saying the same thing that i said here that i said in a text message and then another email like in the past day or two um to different people in different contexts but like the, the energy of it was like it's the same um so that kind of started a whole I, there was like an insight around like you know i'm saying that i am as all i'm saying i'm i what i'm declaring is my own existence and it happens to have this particular shape at the time in, in these particular concerns but like anytime i open my mouth i'm basically saying the same thing to anybody who's listening like there's not um a huge difference there so so i i uh i kind of drew that back to like you know uh, there's a story in the bible in exodus of moses meeting this burning bush in the desert and the burning bush tells Moses his name. Um, and, you know, does the whole like take off your sandals and like, this is my name and you'll know, be the prophet for whatever uh, for Israel and lead him out of Exodus or out of Egypt. Um, so I, I was just really struck by that and that, like kind of just fit the moment. It was like, ah, oh, like this is what's happening. Like this is just an instance of the I am or an instance of like this, whatever and this is just who i am who everybody is um so i started playing around because I, like, I was a math nerd i studied math and i was like ah what if i make up a symbol to like interact with this concept of amness you know and then if there's this concept of amness there's this concept of i am not ness and there's this concept of like you are ness and that kind of forms some kind of basic building blocks of some something so i i made up these three symbols, which are in my pin tweet to kind of push around a paper and whiteboards and try to see how they related to each other. And I was like, oh, I'm going to, you know, see how you can do algebra with these kind of things or see how you can like, maybe there's some kind of like geometry that you make or some kind of like mathematical structures. Um, so yeah, I, 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 um, that was the introduction to like really being super autistic about language and just, um, not letting go of like these little, these little building blocks and patterns of of something so i i um i realized eventually what i was doing was kind of mapping my own perception um like i i think it's both like that these are real things in the world and it's primarily because it's me looking at them like i don't think those are separate um but i had this like kind of synesthetic synesthesia -etic uh kind of experience of like texture like when these different forms would hit like negation felt a certain way in my body or like a word that kind of was you are shaped like a conditional or like a, a push or you felt a certain way um and like this kind of smoothness or like the kind of i amness felt really good and i was like ah, i want that like there's this quality of like speaking in line with that and in line with um uh like really relationships to people that i really like and it was just like i'm going to figure out like what this is um so yeah that was that was that was kind of the genesis of that arc there um 
and eventually I, you know, kind of touching like the symbolic order out there, like your perception, you're like eventually like, oh, wait, it's me. I'm here. Like, this is, I'm just here. And then, and then I got into the body and then I got into like, um, oh, all this kind of other stuff that I'm wrapping up at the moment or you know, still working through. So, yeah, there's a lot in there, but that's, that's maybe a sketch of it. This synesthesia that you started to notice, do you know, like, were you feeling those feelings of smoothness in your body? And if so, where, or how were, how are you perceiving these experiences? What was that like for you? Yeah. Um, I, I didn't like associate it with like emotions until later. I knew it had something to do with emotions and body and energy or whatever. Um, I think I just felt it because I, I would get like confused or annoyed with people who were, uh, I think in retrospect, like repressing emotions or kind of like not speaking in some kind of honesty that I wanted. Hmm. And I was like, or with myself, and I was like, why, what's going on here? Like, why does this feel so foggy? Or like, why does my brain go foggy when there's like this particular type of speech happening? Um, so it was like, it was just like, um, Yeah, um, I forgot where I was going. What what were you asking about? Hmm. I'm just smiling because uh, I find that really relatable, that description of sometimes finding people's speech, whether it's your uh, your own or someone else's, like irritating or confusing or yeah, uh, almost like dizzying or something. You're like, wait, what's, what's happening here? And I like how you described that. Um, it was so annoying. That was like the mo main thing. I was like, I was just annoyed. I was like, why is this so frustrating? Like, why is this not as simple as it seems? Why are all these like, I, I pictured, you know, like smoothness is like some shape and the negations kind of got this crack or this wrinkly feeling. And it's like, he's pushing. It was like, why is this so complicated? What's actually going on? And why doesn't it match like the feeling oftentimes? Like, why do people's words not match how they feel? That's really confusing. Mm -hmm. And it's like, I think I just refused to like accept the reality or accept like the suggestion that it was like my problem, mm -hmm. that like the world was um, not being honest or, or, you know, being a certain way. Um, yeah. Well, so, no, why was it so difficult? What was it about these speech acts? How do you understand that now? Um, I, I, uh, uh, what do you what do you mean what are you asking or, hmm. what? well another way of asking this question would be you know what would you tell your past self about the questions that you had about these speech acts that you were finding so frustrating oh i'd be like you're doing great but like this is you're gonna have a lot of fun <laughs> unwinding this in the next several years and this is gonna be like a good obsession for you to figure out how you fit into the world um i'd be like yeah you're, you're solving the puzzle you're doing great um and what is the solution to the puzzle? Uh, I think you just, uh, yeah, I, 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 I think I've, that's a good question. I have no idea. Um, I think ultimately it's about like being in the world and like uncrinkling your relation to self other such that like stuff can flow through you better. Um, And, and I think this is like, like there's like different sections of mind or like those different pockets, the different folds of like what different planes of reality are happening. There's, there's some kind of like, you're born in that and it's all mixed up inside you. And then there's this thing that happens as you grow or can happen, I think, which is like, you can choose to like purify your relationship to those and like straighten them out. And then you just, I think you just end up doing prettier, more interesting things in the world. Like it, it, I think it's just kind of like individuation. It's like, is like maybe one word for it. Um, yeah, I, I think it's just about making pretty stuff happen in the world and mm -hmm. how do you get better at being more of what you are. So like more depth of whatever the thing you're supposed to be bringing into the world can happen in a cool way. If we took a speech act that at the time that you're exploring this, 
he would have found irritating or confusing or, you know, not the right texture synesthetically. How would you understand that kind of a speech act now? Um, I'll give you an example. It's like I, I, with negation, negation, I think is fascinating. Um, because I like everything is, it, it, this is not like, I, th I think what I did when I kind of, when my brain broke on that dichotomy between Christianity and the world was kind of like this acceptance of literally everything in, um, I don't think I'm like enlightened. I don't think I'm like, you know, anything, but like it, it rhymes maybe with like something about emptiness in Buddhism, except like the opposite in a way that feels like more Western. Hmm. There's philosophers who talk about kind of like, oh no, that's like the Western, there's something in the Western mind that like that's a thing, whatever. Um, but like that just felt foundational, like the is and am are like foundational, like being in the world. Um, and being is different than existing, I think. So I, I like to use the word insistence. Like if you can picture like a sheet, it's not just like that there's a rock. It's like that there's a rock on a sheet or a sheet that makes a rock. And there's stuff flowing through the sheet and it's like desire and it's like okay like there's this like desire or like eros like flowing through the universe like animated it or the spirit of god or you know, whatever it's like what is like because it's like causing it to exist in time as opposed to like oh it's literally it's just a rock sitting it's like no it's a rock being a rock like actively being a rock um so so like that's kind of like what i think amnes is about um not is interesting because like is not or am not like i'm saying those words and those words exist next to each other like i could draw parentheses around like i am and that's like a, an entity or quantity or something i could draw parentheses around like i am not and that's also an entity or quantity like it it's it's not actually negating anything it has something that references to like this idea of negation but it's still like a word in the positive sense and it exists and like there's three words there it's not that i am not it's i am not like those words that expression of notness but the notness is and am if that makes sense it's hmm. so like that just really confused me for a while um or like was just this puzzle to wrestle with and like how i resolved it was just that like no that's just that is like i am not also is except it has the shape of i am not you know so there's like some inherent confusion in that so i um remember uh maybe four years ago I, I like wrote i had like this journal every day for like the first year and i would like write and then i go through and put footnotes by all the negation and i would like go down the bottom page and i would unwrap those be like oh no like what is a way i can rephrase this so that it is in line with the nature of God, with the nature of the universe, the nature of desire. So I'm not the one introducing confusion and there's just more is. Um, and I found feelings that way in some sense. So I was like, oh, wait, I am not like, there's all these feelings that often hide behind negation. Or there's all these like, ah, there's a lot of charge there. And it's like, why am I not expressing it? Or why am I using negation? Because you don't know how to say it or you're ignoring it or you're like you're repressing it or you're pushing out other people or like you are like not me but you are you know kind of thing so it was like this kind of charged web of energy and emotion and stuff and i was like oh this is very sticky because it's in me and it's in how i see the world and it's in whatever so can you give me a really concrete if made up example of taking an i am not and turning it into a an assertion of i am yeah 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 like um i'm not sure what i'm going to eat for lunch today like that's interesting because like it, it doesn't really exist on its own it's like factual there's this like mind in society which would say like that's like a logical sentence that's like factual but like it doesn't it, it's factual it's also static because like there's no desire happening or like the, the, the desire is to not um because like it, or the desire is to like repress what you want for lunch you know uh so it's like okay like why am i using negation or like how can i it's like i i uh what might be going on there like i um there's some kind of bind i caught up i'm caught in maybe like i am 
I didn't pack a lunch. I don't want to go out and spend you know money on food at lunch. I still want to eat food. Therefore, I don't know what I want for lunch. And like the ex the desire is just to kind of not, or the desire is caught in this bind between these three truths, these three structures in your mind. Um, so, so a way to unwind it might be like, I feel, I think it's just about feeling emotions. I think it just autistically like recreated, like feeling emotions or, you know, something about engaging with the world. But, um, I, I, uh, like, I would, I would, I, I find that like, usually have to like drop down a level, like somewhere and just kind of listen to like what the desire actually is. And then from there, it's like, oh, like, ah, like now the thing can flow. And it's like, I wanted to bring lunch, but you know, I didn't bring lunch and I still want to eat food. And there's like a, a knot in a butt there or something, or I can kind of work that again. It's like, oh, I, I, um, I uh, want to eat food like that's the kind of pure form and kind of let it breathe through that more. It's like, ah, I want to go, you know, to Jimmy John's down the street or something or I'm going to steal my coworker's lunch or whatever. <laughs> There's like some kind of like where the thing, the flow can actually happen. Hmm. Um, and like, I don't, it seems like really, really stupidly fine grained, but like, this is like what my mind just was stuck on for years. And like trying to figure out like the exact mechanics of like desire and like these structures. So like, yeah, I don't know. Does that, I don't know if that, does that make sense? Like as a simple, I don't know, kind of example. Let me make sure I understand. So initially you might say something like, I don't know what I want for lunch, which is a negation. And if you were to sit with that and try to find an affirmation and like an assertion, instead it'd be like, I am hungry and maybe I want to save money for lunch and uh, I feel confused about what to buy or something like that. And those yeah. are all assertions rather than a negation. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like, where is the open area to flow into? Mm -hmm. uh, and I found like, I, I did this with all of my writing at the time too. I would like, if there was a negation, I would rephrase it. And I would, I would, um, it always came out like, if I didn't know what to say, it would come out as poetry or it would come out as like, jibber jabber that just kind of had emotional charge hmm. still um and it felt like oh the, the desire still wants to come through but it's going to come through however it possibly can um or like i found it, it it led me to like be more poetic in writing or more kind of evocative or more in line with like what the charge behind the words were like the energy of the kind of emotional thrust of it so, how would that feel as you sort of unravel the negation into something that was more like statement of what is um yeah so it, it kind of feels like you are like looking at something it's like say there's like a picnic table in front of you and there's like a bunch of other stuff too but like you're just kind of like tunnel visioned looking at this picnic table and you're like i don't want the picnic table i'm not i'm not writing about the picnic table and it's like okay okay cool um it feels like taking the blinders off and like acknowledging that like like oh it could be any like pick something where do you want to look like pick something that does does something um or uh, yeah sometimes like i feel like it feels like this kind of like function or line with like a discontinuity and it's like oh it, it's you're looking like straight at the hole or the, the void or like the the one thing that you can't describe so you how about you just pick anything else that is and try to see like what what actually is there um so it feels like it's like related like seeing too it's like are you are you seeing the thing you're looking at or are you not seeing the thing you're looking at hmm. i imagine from the way you're describing it that it would feel like freeing or relieving or relaxing oh or, yeah. yeah 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 no there, there's like my whole body would like relax when i read like language that was like in line with this mm -hmm. uh, or like i spoke to people who are kind of more of that kind of nature mm -hmm. when it was not it was like trying to do all this math about like oh my god you said this but like there's something else happening because of like this you are and this push and like this you're, it's crinkly and it's like it's like oh my god like there's mm -hmm. it's very frustrating to be around and like mm -hmm. it's not it's not smooth what effects did you notice applying this having on 
your life and you know your own speech or your writing or also your interactions yeah. with other people yeah um i yeah i like all my texts you know for the first year or two like i i i was editing them a lot and making sure there was like, what am i expressing it actually um it brought me better in line with what i actually wanted and it made like it felt like it kind of got me out of like some kind of stuckness of like wrestling with where i was it was like oh no like not that I don't want that. I'm just not going to say anything because I can't say anything in that direction or to that person that's not full of which is weird stuff for like this kind of uh, some kind of negotiation. It was like, oh, it, it kind of showed like a path forward that was like, oh, this is how you can exist and this is how there is motion towards this thing. And if there's no motion towards it or if you're kind of that in relation to it, like you just let it pause or you can untangle it. Um, so I, I think it led me to um, somewhat cleaner relationships with people or like people that I could have cleaner relationships with mostly. Um, and it led me towards stuff I was more interested in as opposed to like, I don't want to do this, but I'm going to push through. It was like, oh no, I'm just going to, like there's something else I actually want to do. So, yeah. Did you start to build almost like defense mechanisms or way of relating to people who didn't have this language that was sort of clean or smooth? Um, sometimes I like try to like show people what I was saying or like correct them and be like, no, your desire has to do And it just never worked. So I was like, oh, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I think it, it, um, there's some kind of like hypersensitivity towards something that I had to have whatever. And it was like, it felt like I could like help someone else untangle the thing that was happening with them or their speech. It was like, Oh, you're kind of painting this picture of these geometric shapes happening. And I can like kind of like touch these spots and like, ah, that will, that will like untangle your thing or like get us moving in the right direction or, or something it's like that, you know, somewhat, somewhat useful. It sounds like from the way you're describing it, that it clarified your own speech and how you wanted to speak and also helped you to find people that you wanted to connect to and felt good to connect to, but, and this is a negation here, didn't give you like a cleaner way to relate to people that did use negation in their speech or something like that. Um. Like I'm yeah. getting an image of like a, a sort of almost like a safe zone, like Switzerland or something like that, where it's like, okay, I could go hang out in Switzerland, but there's still wars over there and I can't really do something about that. Yeah. 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 No, I'd say like that's changed. Um, I, I think the more I've brought this inside, like it's, it's just like, Oh, you're, it's so stupid. Cause it's like, for a while I was like, Oh, you're really on to something. It's like, no, you're just becoming a person. You're just kind of doing your thing. I think. Um, but uh, yeah, no, I, I think it just kind of was like, oh, it really only thing that matters is your speech. And if you're kind of being smooth and if you're kind of being true and it doesn't, it, it, that will almost kind of correct how you're interacting with people or. Um, yeah, I, I don't know if it changed my relationship with people who are using a lot of negation other than just kind of like, ah, that's interesting. I'm going to go yeah, probably somewhere else or I'm going to not try to wrestle with whatever system you're in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Hmm. Were there any other discoveries that you had or effects that this line of exploration started to have for you? Um, yeah, I think it showed me God again in the world in a certain way. Like I think, a lot of this was kind of like born out of some like the frustration of like falling out of religion. Um, so there's like, there was some kind of like thing that I think I was doing, which was like trying to find God, find my relationship to the world again. Um, and try to, try to like, see like, how does, how does that stuff breathe through me? How does it, how do I exist in that? So it felt like some kind of path, it's kind of like some kind of path of isness or whatever I was trying to follow that it's like go here and then you'll learn stuff and then you'll get plugged back into the hole that you want to be part of again. 
how to put this. That makes sense to me, knowing you and what you've shared about your story. And also, it strikes me as, uh, yeah, I'm curious about that. And why would there be a connection between your relationship to language and your relationship to the world or God? Yeah. Um, actually, I forgot about this, but I think the most interesting thing um, so it's, it's very Christian, whatever this thing I'm doing is, it's like very Christian, I, just because that's in me and I can't escape it. And it's good. It's fine. Um, but like, there's this similar story between like, God, you know, becoming man, Christ, whatever. Um, and like word becoming flesh. And I am becoming Logos or that becoming Jesus kind of in the world. Um, so like, Genesis opens up the first book of the Bible with in the beginning, you know, God created whatever. And then there's the gospel of John in the new Testament opens with, um, uh, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word, you know, eventually became flesh and dwelt among man. It's like, there's this, uh, word becoming flesh process, which is like, feels very Christ pathy to me. And it, it feels like, some kind of like very outside the church without any structure kind of way for like my psyche to kind of show me like this thing I care about, which is how do you follow this path in the world or like be, you know, Christ or um, what is, what does that look like? Um, yeah. So it, it feels like some kind of sense of like following like engaging with my past or my path with, I don't know, like, what does it mean to be Christ in this moment? Because, you know, maybe Christ, the I am, Christ is like this kind of perfect, maybe, you know, manifestation of the I amness of God, you know, in human flesh. And that's what it looked like for him. It's like, what does it look like for me? Like, how do I act? How do I behave? How do I, um, how do I do that thing that Christ was doing in some sense? What did that look like for you to follow that thread and connect to that Christ nature through that? Uh, in what in what way? Really, like how so? Mm. If I heard you correctly, this exploration was leading you back to God and to how to show up in this way in your own life. And what did that look like? How did that feel? How were you acting? What effects yeah. did it have on you? Um, I don't know how to answer that. Um, I think in some sense, like there was a, a moment of rupture with, um, family a couple of years ago where it was just like, oh, I've got, you know, stuff to take care of and like my relationship to family. It's like, ah, I never thought about this before. Um, uh, and it felt like I found more of the people who were kind of like living in like some really good alignment at, with that type of spirit after that. And they each had something to teach me like about my relationship to like my body or other people or um, family. And um, yeah, I, I uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm not sh quite sure how to answer that. But, but there, there's, there was a lot of like, like finding people, and then like relationality that was like, ah, you're missing this thing that you, or this skill, like, and you can, we can learn it together. I can, you can get this kind of thing here. What were some of the lessons you found yourself learning from these from this series of people? Um, I think it was like it was like really hmm. 
I don't know how to answer this in an interesting way. Like the, the boring answer is that like, just like, oh, here's how you have, like, have boundaries with people. Here's how you kind of respect your own body. Here's how you um, communicate. Or like, here's ways that you didn't know you could communicate, that you can communicate more clearly. Here's like how you can relate to the contents of mind or psyche or images or um, desire. Um, there's a much more interesting way to express that, but that's, I don't know, it's just like boring, how do you exist in the world kind of stuff. Like it, like just how do you exist at like the skill level you need to, so you're not hurting yourself or mm. you're not uh, just accumulating like a lot of stickiness in some mm. sense. Yeah. Now, if I understand correctly, you sometimes coach people in some of these skills that you've learned. Uh, what's that like and how do you help people to learn these skills or work with them? Um, yeah, uh, so that's been like the last year or so. Um, it's really basic stuff. It's I, I, I talk about like I like talking about like how I understand negation or projection or like the physicality of like where these things exist in relation to you. I like talking about the body. So like, where is speech coming from? Are there parts of your being that you're ignoring when you're speaking? And how does that affect the conversation? Um, we do a lot of writing together. It's so like, it's it's kind of like about the connection between, I like, I like going back and forth between like a Google doc and unwinding a bit of something and the person's body and like, okay, where does it feel like there's something structure occurring? Or like, how does the interaction feel between us right now? um and like how does it feel to talk so i like i like just helping people build up like this library of like oh how does this phrase feel what kind of structural elements does it have what is happening in me and just kind of like over and over and over like okay what what's going on in the moment as speech is happening and is there a way how can i um include more of reality in my speech. So I'm not like rejecting anything with either negation or projection or or the way I'm holding my posture or the way I'm um, relating to someone or relating to the, the moment. Like what's, what's really happening? Uh, is there like confusion happening? Cause that's like a huge data point or is there kind of like some, some background thing that you're trying to hide? So that's, always going to come up in the feel of the, the thing happening. So like, is there a way to just go directly towards that and make it really precise and just see what kind of interesting thing happens after that? Hmm. What kinds of effects have some of the people you've worked with reported or that you've noticed in them? Um, I think like, I don't know, my mind's kind of going blank at the moment, but I, I I think a few people have said like greater kind of fidelity and seeing patterns as they're happening and like a few more moves of like, Oh, this is like what I can do with this, um, with this certain energy we found or this certain kind of like texture, um, more confidence in speaking and like a greater ability to access that confidence in like front of people or in terms of like bringing what, you want into the world it's like oh like my speech actually does have to be aligned with my desire um or it's gonna hurt me otherwise it's like how do i how do i work with like whatever structure is happening in the moment are there any current areas of exploration for you with these themes things that you're still working out or curious about yeah um it's Really, it's like I kind of dropped all the symbolic stuff and all the, it's it's more just like in the moment, like how am I existing in my body and how am I um, relating to people? Um, yeah, like a big, a big 
area of inquiry is like more like shaped in terms of like perception and feeling now and like what are the kind of different feeling structures happening in my body and how are they corresponding with my environment around me or like the relationship I'm in in the moment or the conversation and how can I use that to like navigate um what's happening so like uh yeah, like I, I find like maybe there's an environment like I feel cut off from my lower body and like there's um, like seeing that kind of pattern reflected in the relationships I'm in or in like I'm around other people who are also cut off from the lower bodies or also, you know, there's some kind of symbolic thing that's happening that would, you know, put us next to each other um, or, or um, you know, using that as like a cue to like, oh, I need to take care of of my space more and like kind of secure like the base of something happening in my life. Hmm. Hmm. I'm reminded of, um, I've been reminded throughout this conversation of a, I think I've noticed different patterns, like the ones that got you curious about these themes. And one that has been on my mind recently is, and I find it difficult to describe, but something like, I guess I don't believe a lot of the things that people say, or they seem like polite things that people will say. Like I noticed one earlier in this conversation, like when it started out, I was like, oh, I've been looking forward to this conversation. And I think the truer thing would be like, oh, I've been aware for some time that we're having this conversation. I haven't been like dreading it or like, especially like, I was like, oh, I know we're going to have this. And, um, or like, I'm, I'm curious about these topics, but like, it's not like I've been waking up every day and be like, oh man, I can't wait to talk to Mage or something, um, which is kind of what the words imply. And I think that's a small example of it, but you can kind of hear it in people's voices sometimes where like their words say one thing and then their voice is saying another. And I find that very jarring and frictionful. Yeah, that really bothers me. It yeah. uh, makes the whole thing harder. And, and I don't know why it's so... Um, there's some people who like just really naturally are like very lined up like all the time. And uh, I think that's awesome. And uh, <laughs> I think it's cool and powerful. Good for them. Cheers Thanks. to them. <laughs> uh, how, how, how do you experience your own speech at this point? Um, it still feels like puzzles. Um, it still feels like, uh, or I don't know, like, it, it's not like I'm, I'm not like as obsessed with it anymore. I think it's just more kind of like longer term, like, oh, I'm speaking and like, I feel this in my chest or I feel this in my leg or my pelvis. And like, oh, I did that with like three people this week and it was like the same pattern. Like, oh, is there like a different way I can engage with it? Or maybe I like this, or maybe like I, maybe this is fine. Um, So I, I, I tend to think that like the more lined up you are with what you should be doing in life, like the easier speech is. And like it kind of like there's a way like I went to a few I did a couple classes in college, like a theater class for voice and like a singing class. And I went to like some mechanics of, you know, like how do you hold your breath when, you know, whatever your diaphragm kind of class a few weeks ago. Um, and like those are cool. And I also think that like if you find where you're supposed to be speaking, like the direction or like what you're doing in life, like that's more important because like those kind of things just take care of themselves. It's like, oh, all of a sudden I'm carrying myself with more weight or, you know, I'm breathing deeper because like my whole being is aligned with this thing. So it it, um, it, it kind of feels like a, a continual puzzle, like refined, like what am I doing? Like, where should I be speaking into? Like, what is what is my role on earth kind of? What am I supposed to be doing here? Hmm. I think. Hmm. I felt a question emerge as you said that, that I'm going to take a moment to find the words for. Yeah, it's like, what would make you proud of your own life? Um, I think I want to have a family. I want to have a 
you know, do some good work in a career and uh, just be kind of faithful to that. Like that feels like the, 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 the most important thing, I think. Hmm. Yeah. How do you see your own gifts that you're here to give? Like, what do I think they are? Like, how do I want to use them? What do you think they are? Yeah. Um, I think there's something that like, I, I, I think I see things well, and I, I don't always know what to do with that. But like, I think there's some kind of like, sensitivity towards something I've been training and turning into like, you know, uh, attunement and strength um, over the last number of years. So that's like what a lot of this process was about. I think it was like, oh, you're picking up on a lot of information with your body or your mind. And like, what the hell do you do with it? Like, go solve that. Um, so, uh, yeah, like I love, I don't know. I like being with people. I like connecting people a lot. I like kind of, uh, yeah, there's some like, there, there's a sense in which I think I'm trying to become a tree. Um, like, which is like rooted in the ground and like touching the sky. And it's kind of like stationary in place with what like either geographically or like in the network, it's got some kind of like, it stands up on its own. It, it, it exists well, but it's always kind of sharing information with like the people around it. So it feels like part of what I'm trying to do is like weave together, like the places and people I care about into maybe not some whole, but like into some, like, like there's exchange happening. And there's something, um, like I, I, I view like, I think there's something like creative in how you live, um, like what route you kind of chose, choose through life, through like the fabric of whatever the stuff is. And like, I think you tie things together, like as you relate to them or as, as you kind of, um, exist in them. So, so there's some like creativity in like relating to different sections of the fabric and holding on in, in some sense it feels like like these these like chunks of mind right it's like i think it's good if they are unified it's like how do i do that i have to be unified in my relation to them and then just maintain relation and like hold these kind of contradictions or hold these kind of things until they turn into a hole inside of me um and then just kind of existing after that we'll be doing the work of like at least that chunk of the work yeah hmm. are there any questions that you're acutely aware of in your own consciousness at this time at this chapter of your life um yeah um there's this upper body lower body split i experience uh which Interestingly, like just flipped like this last week into like, used to be like lower body was more pain or more something happening. And now it's like, that's like really quiet and still now. And then it feels like there's this thing resting on my upper body that I'm kind of working through like somatically or whatever, just how I'm going through life. Um, so that's a question is like, what do I do with that? I don't really know what it is. It's just kind of mysterious. And like, actually I do know what it is. It, it's, it's, it, there's, there's this, um, one of the ways I see, um, like these, those symbols in my bio, like I, I, there, there's, there's some way like my mind keeps projecting them onto like different things, you know, as I go through life and then I refuse to choose or like I find the way to hold them both and then I change. Um, uh, where was I going with this? Um, yeah, so like, uh, lower body felt something like you know capital s society upper body felt like you know me so how am i re existing in relation to society now it feels like uh lower body is like kind of firm in something and upper body is wanting to go back in time to something that was more comfortable so it's like ah oh, like how do i get these things to play nice with each other mm -hmm. um so there's there that the, the most recent split i think is between time and motion like how do I understand like existence in some kind of feeling of like the fullness of time or like the kind of like deep listening to like 
universe versus like I'm moving. And it used to be like, oh, I, I move or I listen. And I can't do both. Um, or, or, or they were unified maybe two years ago, then they broke apart again, and now they're being put back together in a new way. So it's, it's, I, I feel like the last few weeks I've been finding like, oh, there's motion and there's like kind of being at the same time. And that's pretty cool. Um, so that it just feels like a very particular, like kind of somatic or perceptual kind of puzzle that also is like existing in the world and also is like, ah, I'm going back to school. I want to finish my degree. I'm kind of like trying to like merge these threads of life together into like this new project or like this bigger scale project than whatever I've been doing before, kind of maybe more whole fitting with society kind of project. Um, yeah. So like the, the, the kind of broader moves in life and things I'm moving towards feel the same as like the splits in my body feels the same as like the kind of ways of relating things in myself I'm trying to hold on to and integrate. And is the same as like the things I care about out there that I'm also trying to work on. What would you say are some of the recurring themes or questions that you've been exploring through your Twitter account? I feel like I've honestly been saying like the same thing, just in like different language. It feels like it's just spiraling outward. Like it, it started off and I was just kind of like making jokes about mushrooms and, uh, um, just riffing with people and then it, it kind of you know slowly and misspelling words um it slowly changed and like it feels like some kind of thing that was like deep in my subconscious has like kind of moved through and the twitter account is like just a reflection of that over time um like like i'm using complete sentences now or mostly complete sentences and like talking about ideas versus you know just putting a vibe out there and that feels like somewhat more kind of like, oh, there's these things that have kind of integrated and moved through. And as this kind of thing bigger than me has passed through me, it's left me kind of changed and rearranged. And um, yeah, it's like I, I, I spin around like perceptual time. Uh, I think that's pretty important. Uh, Christianity, my relationship to like, what is Christ? How is that moving in the world? Um, how do I exist or like, what is my relationship to like my being or how is it? That sounds dumb. I, I don't I don't like that, but uh, yeah, no perceptual time. I think is interesting though. That's one of my favorite things to talk about or favorite things to notice. Um, I remember there's like a few times like during the pandemic, I was like noticing conversations and I was like in a zoom room or, you know, in person and like people would be saying stuff and conversations happening, whatever. And then someone says something that like, somebody else's face changes and like, like something real happened. Um, and that like, I think is really important. And it's like, Oh, what was that thing that just happened? That feels like speech occurring instead of being flat. Mm -hmm. And that feels like that kind of smoothness when that's happening. Um, like also up to now, or like up to a few minutes ago, I kind of felt the same in our conversation. Mm -hmm. you know, like, oh, like nothing's like, I don't know, maybe you felt differently, but. For me, it was like something's not clicking it. And now I'm like, oh, like something reorganized in my experience. And now it's something's moving a little bit more smoothly. Um, so yeah, I, I I I like talking about perceptual time. I think that's important, or like an important puzzle piece. Um, and that kind of happens when like these speech structures or being structures kind of shift and like allow each other to happen or recognize something that weren't before. So it's like, oh, like what kind of speech like actually affects someone or like what kind of like presence with someone actually affects someone or, or am I affected by or on a larger scale like what kind of being in the world actually changes the world versus you're just kind of like you're just in a pattern and like you are a part of that pattern in the world and the pattern is doing its thing mm -hmm. like break out of a pattern break out of a thing in relation to a larger chunk of mind how do you get back in relation how do you you know what are the moments when things actually happen and actually change and actually move? Um, so I think those are really interesting. Um, what does this phrase perceptual time mean to you? Um, so like there's clock time and then there's perceptual time. So like clock time, it's like clock is ticking. It's just happening. 
like that's just happening regardless. Perceptual time is when like feeling changes and like it becomes a new moment. So like um, there's this phrase someone tweeted, like this account is long deleted like a while ago, but they're like, if there's no difference between one moment and the next moment, if they feel the same, no time has really passed regardless of how much clock time has happened. Um, And their claim was that like only love like is the thing that like ticks forward time, like mm. some kind of like, actual motion. Um, I that was like stuck in my head. Like that was just, like, like a seed that kind of activated some noticing of stuff like that for me. Um, yeah, so I think, I think, yeah, broadly there's this like kind of cultural freeze or kind of world freeze that's happening, or it is existing in the world or maybe has always existed. And then there's places where time feels like it moves, relation feels like it moves. And uh, yeah, that's, I, I, I have a tweet about this, but I, I talk about like that being my politics. Like I, I, my politics is like, I am pro a whole unrent fabric, like a smooth fabric that like moves in time. And like, I'm pro time happening. Um, and I, I, all these things, I think, um, I'm missing a lot that I think is important. So I'm, I'm going to try to connect a few more things. Um, all these things happening are like also happening in the body and also happening between bodies. And like time kind of, I think, happens between bodies too. It's like, you know, like relational time. And maybe it's another word for perceptual time. Like when does the feeling of a relationship change and when does it like start to click or like maybe you're in an argument to each other and like what's the moment like oh something changed something opened back up you know we're like back in time again and things are flowing again and time is moving uh and we're not like stuck in kind of like batty or you know, whatever's happening um yeah so so i think that has a lot to do with like especially like CPTSD and neurodivergence and like these kind of interesting things that happen with minds um, and people's perception. It's like, oh, there's like pockets where like time is really crinkled or perception is really crinkled or emotions are really crinkled and not flowing as much. What's happening there? Like what is going on? And like, how do you like, can you massage the system and can you like get it to open up and maybe like something moves and changes and helps more of the fabric or more of time flow? or more of, you know, people's experience flow. Um, yeah. Yeah, that stuff I think is cool. And it's all like, yeah, I don't know. It, it, yeah. yeah. In these moments where something shifts and it's palpable and almost like something real has been said, what do you understand to be happening there? Um, I don't know. Just a good <laughs> question. Uh, you know it when you feel it. Like you feel yeah. the and it's like it's like oh that's real like i like that like that's meaningful some people resist it some people hate that um i think it I, I don't know like one lens i have is like it's kind of like updating the computation that sounds like way too i don't know formal though mm -hmm. uh, or like there's like an exchange that happens like energy exchange or information exchange it was information like some information actually got exchanged and actually got accepted mm -hmm. So like, um, right before I jumped on this call with you, I was, I'm um, staying with an old friend of mine and I was like, Hey, can I borrow your truck and go to the lookout tower, you know, five miles away and just go do that hike? He's like, yeah, sure. And then he came out and I'm kind of like, you know, dealing with this pattern in my body at the same time, my lower body feeling a certain way, my upper body full of tension. And, um, he was like, Hey, by the way, like they're doing road work on County C. So like, you might want to take another way. And I was really annoyed by that. I was like, I was like, he said it a few times, like, I heard you, like, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm like, whatever, like, I'm just, I'm just going to go, I'm not, you know, annoyed. And um, then I realized, like, as soon after that, when I walked out the door, I was like, oh, my body's rejecting that information, like, what's going on? And I was like, oh, that's because I'm like, really in my upper body, and like, the upper body is really disconnected from the lower body, and there's not in my solar plexus that's kind of like, splitting the two. And that's just kind of the puzzle for the day. <laughs> is what I'm working mm. on. And I was like, okay, like I'm annoyed with you. I, um, you know, we're also like, you know, haven't been talking a lot the last few days, whatever. And I've, you know, been 
I've been here a week and I'm like kind of getting tired of it kind of thing. Um, so I was like, okay, whatever. What if I just like accept the information, like let it hit me, change me. And I can still like, you know, kind of keep my distance from my friend if I want to or whatever. So I did. And then I found like, oh, like that like wants to go down into my hips or like this tension wants to be held by my hips or by my, the way I'm standing or the way I'm like existing. And I played with that like the whole time I was hiking and, you know, I went for lunch and I came back and when I was driving too. And it taught me something really interesting about like, oh, like this is what like actual rest or relaxation feels like in motion. Cause like, that's kind of been what I've been working on the last few weeks is like existing and in motion at the same time. And I don't know why, like I'm stuck in all this stuff. I think, I don't know. It's just, I, I, it's just whatever it is, is the stuff I'm into. But um, it just was like, oh, that's like the kind of posture I need to hold in order to exist in time and exist like the way I want to exist in the world and be in motion while doing so. Um, and like, you know, not rejecting his comment about maybe wanting to avoid Highway C you know, because that wasn't really what it was about. There's some relational thing happening. I don't know what the relational thing was happening, but I was rejecting that. And it was like, oh, like, what if I just accept the relational thing happening and like let that affect me and like let that click forward over process them in? Because it ended up being exactly what I needed to deal with the puzzle. That, you know, like that kind of body feeling thing that I was in today. Hmm. Uh, so, yeah. I obviously don't know about the relational situation with your friend other than what you've described but just hearing the words as you recount them uh i think for me sometimes in those situations if someone says something like that it's a little bit indirect or something like that like uh like for example yeah if you'd said there's a block on this road like that's a different statement than you might want to do this thing because there's a block on the road or something. It's a little, I would experience that as like, um, I, I mean, I don't really love these words, but like controlling or manipulative where there's like a bid on your actions and trying to get you to act a certain way or something like that. I, I don't know if you perceived that or if that was his motive. I don't know your friend at all, but like when I've been in situations like that, it, I often perceive it as like a combination of revealing information and like, trying to direct you or shape your action in a certain way. Oh yeah, for sure. Uh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. And there, I think there was like conditional tense or like kind of, you might want kind of, mm -hmm. I hate the conditional tense so much. Uh -huh. It makes me go fuzzy a lot. And there's like that IQ jokes, like, you know, you're, you know, you're retarded. If you, you can't understand a conditional, you're below uh -huh. whatever. Um, but I think it's, I think there's something real going on there with like kind of how language processing happens. And it's like, Oh wait, like, no, this is like, computationally more expensive and if you're maybe processing it using your body a lot it's at least for me however my system's set up it like it fuzzes me sometimes you know it, it, there's there's conversations that doesn't arrangements that doesn't but it's dependent um yeah and i think in this case it was like coming out of like whatever kind of relational energy we had the last few days and which is not bad it's just mm -hmm. just we just hadn't talked about it so it's like oh just a thing that's kind of how it works. It's like, oh, there's, he's doing something beyond telling me about the road and I'm doing something beyond rejecting. And telling <laughs> yeah. But it's also about the road. So I took another route. So I, you know. Yes. Yeah. It occurs to me hearing you talk about this and digesting this, that in those kinds of situations, it sometimes seems like a personal or even cultural blind spot of how to speak about what's present or what your desires are or what your requests are in a, in that sort of clean way. Um, like I, I could imagine a situation like this one, just to make it concrete, not to harp on your friend, because as you're sort of indicating, like this is a very tame situation relatively, uh, but of like what to do with the car or whatever, whatever dynamics are between you. But like, say, I, mean, I could imagine him saying something like, Hey, this is my car there's a block over there and I want you to drive on this road if you're going there because I have this reason I want my car to be treated this way. Like that might be, that could be something else, but at least it's like clean and uh, yeah, yeah. straightforward, yeah. you know? Yeah. Yeah. So that's really interesting actually. Cause I think, um, 
like we're not individuals, right? We're like embedded in this larger system. And like these impulses that you feel from a phrase with keys and how it hits your body and how you're feeling that day and whatever kind of you know mission you're on with integrating your relationship with time or you know how you fit into society like um where was i going with this i had some profound point to say um i don't know i think i lost it um oh yeah i think like there's some way like in which i see like those little cues of like uh this is slightly unacceptable to talk about or like there's some buffer here like there's like as like all these lines crossing in some plane or like somewhere and like it's not trivial like it, it's it's actually important it's like oh you're brushing up against something that's like 10 layers down is maybe like built off this foundation of negation or a foundation of like projection or someone projected onto you 10 years ago and like it created this like tiny little grain of sand you know here in your uh in your liver or whatever and it affects your posture and that affects your speech and like now we're dealing with like this emotional impulse from it it's this really like you know moving fluid highly complex situation going on and it's not trivial um and i think of like people who do like really advanced body work like uh dr miles i've been you know talking about them quite a bit and it's it's really the same thing as like paying attention to speech or motion or energy like this and it's like oh there's some thing that's like information that's like trying to get integrated in the body. And maybe it's a car accident that takes five years to pass through your collarbone fully or a concussion that like influenced your life for a number of years and altered your perception. It's like altered your speech and like all these impulses are changed. So it feels like being smooth in the world or like trying to solve these puzzles earnestly, like does something good to the world too, as you kind of navigate it. And it's like, I don't know. I, I, I would like to view my life as performing, like besides the actual stuff I create and do and like professionally, whatever, it, you know, what I, what I do, it's um, the, the, the being is, is kind of performing this like massaging function on like the larger mind or like you're, you're, you're not separate from that. And um, like these things, like the small things, like actually are very real and matter and like can alter trajectories quite a bit. Um, yeah. I completely agree. Cool. We've covered a lot of uh, territory. Is there anything else that you'd like to talk more about or ask about or dive more deeply into? Um, yeah, I feel like a lot of the things I said were like technically true. And like, I feel like I missed a lot of the meat of the thing. Um, and I'm not exactly sure how to find that in this context. Um, or it feels like slightly off angle, so I don't know what to do with that, but, um, there's this, maybe here's something interesting. Like there's this difference between like about and within, it's like you can talk about stuff and you can talk like within the moment that's happening. And that's like when the, the transfer, you know, I think it, it's just a more direct way of relating to the thing transfer happening so like, there's a way i relate to like talking about things if it's just about things depends on the context too um but like it, it's there's some kind of like i don't know have you have you felt that before do you, you kind of know what i'm pointing to i'm guessing i i feel like i have a sense of it but i'm not certain that it is what you're pointing to um yeah, I don't know that. I'm imagining the difference between something like a Wikipedia article that's describing something kind of factually or abstractly, and then the experience being really present for two real people at a real moment in time, and then them talking from there. Yeah, uh, some kind of sense, maybe also of like, are you talking about the car keys in the road, or are you talking about like the the impulse from ten years ago and the right, 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 right. Relationship right. With the person, you know, some kind yeah. of thing. Um. Hmm. I'm remembering as well from this conversation. Um, well, first off that I feel like one of my intentions for this was to get like kind of a download from you about 
that your work and how you see things. And for me, it's really helpful to get statements about an idea from a person and hear it in the context of their life and their story and stuff like that. So it's that is it like you got the thing you're looking for? I think so to some extent. Yeah. Uh, And that's been interesting to play with in this conversation and watch how what I'm learning is shaping the words I choose and how I'm interacting with you. Um, And then from that, yeah, I'm reminded of um, one of the things I've become really interested in through this series of conversations through this podcast is my own phenomenology while asking people questions or paying attention to them or following my curiosity and also how that manifests through my speech and my own words. And to give a simple example of like whether my words are fluid or if they catch on something and like what's happening there, if it's hard to say or ask something cleanly or um, another one that I'm really curious about is I have this experience pretty commonly where I'll have a question for someone and sometimes it really makes sense to them what the question is and they're like oh they they have the answer and then sometimes it's almost as if I'm like speaking in a foreign language and they're like wait what does this question even mean and I was reminded actually during this conversation of like type safety in programming where like I haven't programmed too much with a type safe language but I get the idea of like oh are you returning a number or a string or you know which which type of number it needs to be a floating point versus an integer or whatever and I think these questions that people are confused by sometimes, like I have a sense of what type of an answer I'm looking for, but it's not obvious to someone else, like what type of it is. Um, Like, for example, a a really simple example of that would be a lot of times I'll ask people what they're feeling and then they'll say something that's not a feeling. It's like an image or a metaphor or a thought or, um, and that's fine. That's information as well, but I'm really like, oh, are you, sad? Are you angry? Are you, you know, whatever. And um, they'll say, uh, I don't know, something else. And, um, but that happens with other more complicated questions as well, where like, there's a kind of a shape of a question that I'm looking for, an answer that I'm looking for, that's difficult to find. And then it's also really relieving when I ask a question that's somewhat obscure and someone just is like, oh, here, they they get it. But um, over time, I'd like to almost expose what the question means to me and what kind of an answer I'm looking for, or what I'm feeling for when I ask someone a question, all of that's kind of been ambiently in my awareness as we're talking about this. Yeah. Questions are, are really interesting, like structures too, or like, uh, uh, emotions mm. in the time, at least for me, like I used to only ask people questions in conversation. Like I would that was just like my thing. I was like, Oh, I'm just, that's all the only move I know. <laughs> I'm laughing because yeah, that's often me. Yeah, and like I think, or like that's something that's changed a lot over the last ten, fifteen years. Is like, um, like some kind of like penetrative or like uh, trying to bring something in from the other, or some kind of like motion push, kind of motion happening with a question. Um, And they always carry assumptions too, and those are kind of very also kind of like angle coded and push coded. But but I I with myself I found like the thing to do was actually kind of like or one of the things I could do was like hold on to the energy of the question inside me and just kind of like let it build or like just not keep getting rid of it like that um, and that did something else so like I don't know if it was so much a conscious process it was like just kind of a background effect of whatever life changes and stuff like that um, and being more comfortable being seen myself. Um, but yeah, that that uh, questions are interesting and holding on to them can be interesting because I found often the thing I wanted to do was like ask it of myself or ask it or get, you know, I was trying to get the other person to do something that actually I wanted to do. And hmm. that's more something thing that felt smoother and straighter and like more kind of more speech happening from more core kind of thing when that got more integrated. When do you ask questions now? Uh, when I'm curious or when I want to know something. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Less to navigate people, I think, than I used to. It was like, it, it used to feel like I had to like 
oh, I have to like construct like or this whole model of whoever you are and then I know how to do it. It's like, oh no, actually I can't do that as much. Hmm. You kind of alluded to this, but I want to come back to it. When when you did this experiment of holding on to questions, what effects did you notice that having? Well, there was a few years where like I like didn't ask for advice. Um, not that I didn't want advice, like I sometimes ask for it, but like I like just noticed acutely like when I was asking people for advice and it was like, wait a second, there's something else happening here than me asking for advice. Hmm. Happening is I'm trying to hand over my agency to someone else, or I'm trying totally. to can you be my dad or can you, you know, can you like tell me what to do, please? Cause I don't, I don't, you know, it's like, no, like that's a question for yourself actually. And like your own relation to like your own questions, your own self. So, um, yeah, like I, there was a lot of tweets that came, especially when I was misspelling stuff that came from sublimating, like the desire to like ask a question about something. And I would just turn it around and be like, no, I'm just going to like broadcast the assumption I'm going to make about the world that the question's coming from and just had lots of emojis or had lots of like, you know, some kind of like, haha, like what or some joke to it or whatever. Like, isn't it funny? The world is like this. And it's like, well, yeah, I don't know. It's just a sublimated way to express the energy of the question. Hmm. Uh, like it was a little more creative and kind of just playing with my own, like laughing my own kind of like, you were going to ask a question. You were going to hand away your, your, your will to someone else. Don't do that. Uh -huh. Hmm. As you said that, I had really vivid memories of almost like a gestalt or feelings about your tweets over the years, both like the misspelling ones. And then I think ones where you're sort of, I, I read you as sort of um, like the word that's coming to mind is like belligerent or argumentative or like disagreeable or something, um, but in a like playful way. And yeah. uh, I, I don't know how much of these impressions of a gestalt are, are true or projection or what have you. But um, I, I really love that about the medium that over time you can really get a sense of an, an impression of what it's like to be someone or how they see the world that of course it's not, who knows if that's actually how they see it or not, but you can really feel for something like that over time. And um, I guess I like, now that I think about it, I like, I like this, what what I see as a kind of like bold, assertive, here's how I see things kind of attitude from you when it comes up because I don't often embody that myself. And it's like, oh, well, someone's doing it. Like, that's good. Uh, I may or may not agree with this particular thing you're on about. That's almost, um, you know, secondary for me. It's just like, oh, thank God someone's doing that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I could stand to do that more often. I noticed that actually one more thing about this is that I noticed that looking at my writing from when I was like 14 or 15 or 16 or 18, like in my teenage years, I was very comfortable being assertive about how I saw the world and like not holding back. And I definitely don't see the world the way he saw it then, but I really miss that. Just the clean, like, this is good. This is bad. This is how I see it. The willingness to go there and embody that kind of energy I think I do appreciate nuance now and and understanding that there's multiple dimensions of reality and how people might see things and that I, I'd be less, it'd be harder for me to find a statement like that, that I'd be really like, this is how it is. But I, I want to be more willing like he was to uh, be like, no, this is how it is. No. Yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's yeah, that can be kind of interesting to play with too. Cause it's like, oh no, that's like the statement is happening. But it's not, there's, like, I don't know, if, if, if there's like, it's not actually about the world or, or it is, but like, um, um, it's like more of the posture you want to embody and like the stance you want to take. Um, like a move, like you were talking about earlier, like a shift in the field of like a bid for something to be seen a certain way or moved in a certain direction. Yeah. Yeah, there was, yeah, something like that. Hmm. Hmm. Anything else that feels alive for you to talk about or dive deeper into? Um,
I don't know. I'm just generally very excited about life at the moment. And I'm, mm. a lot of fun threads to pull together. So mm. looking forward to see how, how those kind of end up in the next few years. So mm. I think a lot of the stuff will kind of, it was interesting because a lot of the stuff we talked about today was, I was realizing as I was saying, I was like, oh, this is all settled material. This is all old material in some sense. And it's not like the current thing. Um, so uh, I, I, I'm, I'm excited to keep pulling together things and keep seeing what, what, uh, what happens. So. Well, from my perspective. Oh, yeah. Maybe this is, this is like the major thrust right now. It's kind of like a lot of this is turned into like health kind of stuff. So I, I have a chronic illness and I, I think a lot of this is kind of stemming from that. And it's like, oh, like how does this affect your nervous system? How does it make it like really sensitive? Why does it match with certain patterns in your mind? And um, I, I think there's, there's a lot I'm interested in with like particularly inflammation and um, health and how does like what are these pockets of mind that have health happening or love happening or um or, or uh what does this maybe like information want to do in this like constrained system hmm. of, of society or how does this how does this information play out so there's there's health stuff and like medical stuff is kind of like my my current edge that that feeling of texture that you describe or um something not being smooth or not and then how i track that to my own experiences of people's statements like i could kind of see how that would get almost like layered into the body of something that's like stuck or just doesn't feel very good or and then how that could lead to yeah, like inflammation or health problems or something like that. If there was enough of that sort of gunk oh. in the system, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I've 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 become like acutely aware of like how different like relational patterns can like feel bad, mm. and then afterward that they, they might like they come into my body in a certain way. And it's like oh, like this is this weird heaviness that I've got in my head, chest, upper shoulders for like the next two weeks because of this this thing. And like I, I'm I I don't know quite how I ended up like that sensitive to stuff, but um. It, uh, it's a little annoying at the moment and trying to figure out how to reduce it. But like, it also is like, it's the same kind of thing as like the keys. And there's like, oh, that's information teaching me like how to interact with the world differently. And it's also this feeling of like sickness, but like, I know it's not sickness. It's more like just kind of, it's just my re response to like stuff or it's, or it is kind of some kind of thing, but it's, it's, it, it's not like medical, like you're not going to go to the clinic over that kind of thing generally. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, a, a lot of stuff just feels smooth and clean in clean relational patterns. And a lot of stuff doesn't when it doesn't. And um, uh, yeah, I think there's like direct pathways between like that stuff and health. Um, yeah, there's like some kind of like, I don't know, there's, there's some kind of like shamanic aspect to it, like like medicine kind of thing and like that i think is kind of happening in some level too um it's like oh like as you solve these puzzles in the world as you kind of like figure out what's going on you're kind of contributing to the health of the world and maybe kind of aligning stuff and like the more base patterns under reality that are contributing to health factors like those are the things you're kind of working with like those are the things i think are good to work with like you might as well go to like the most base level you can or you know whatever level you're operating at the moment it's really a relief when someone finds a way of speaking something that is cleaner when i hear someone say something like oh i didn't know you could say that that way but now that you have i'm always going to say it that way that's a much cleaner way to say it i'm remembering i have a thread of that just starts out with the word phrases but it's like a number of phrases that I've heard or that I've started saying where it's like, oh, this is a really clean, precise way to say something that was previously kind of thorny for me and I didn't know how to say, but now that it's there, like, I don't want to forget that you can say it this way if you want to and um, really make something 
a lot smoother. Yeah. Yeah. There's a few friends I've made that like are really good at that kind of stuff. And I'm just like, or, you know, it, different people have different chunks of those kind of things figured out. And like, I, I love like picking stuff up from people like that. Cause it's like, Oh, I didn't know you could say that. Yeah. I didn't know you could do that. that just is like so easy and clean that like avoids so much kind of like bubbly under the table, whatever -ness. And it's just, yes, more of that, please. That's great. Hmm. I notice as we say that just now, like, oh, I didn't know you could say that. Like to me, that feels like a clean negation. Like it feels almost more assertive than something like twisted or gunky or and I wonder, I'm curious in this moment, what like, oh, what is that? Why am I feeling that that's that feels like kosher to me? I'm like, oh, that's that's fine, even though it has a negation word in it. Yeah, yeah. there's a lot. Of, yeah, I don't know. That's a that's really interesting though. It also feels true to me. Like it's mm -hmm. it's something about the underlying expression fitting in something i guess i hear it as like both when i said it and when you said it as like conveying surprise to each other like almost like you know animals are always like chirping at each other like birds or whatever and like there's something yeah there's something really clean about that like birds chirping at each other or animals barking at each other or whatever it is mooing whatever where it's just it there's a um i think david abram talks about this in spell of the centrist but like there's a first language that's just um like, hmm, I forget how he talks about it, but sort of like very being in the world and like, I am an animal body here occupying space, like, hello, know that I'm here. And on that level, when I, when we both say, oh, I didn't know you could yeah, say that, yeah, it feels was, like surprise is being conveyed. It feels like there's like this brightness or yellowness to it, which the words don't even feel like they're hiding anything, like the way negation often does. It's like, mm. oh, it's floating on top of this expression that's obvious. It It's just an ornament on like the expression the words mm -hmm. are, rather than like it, it, it's not mucked up in anything really mm. yeah. and you could probably i don't know, find some more poetic thing to say but like it's also not going to fit into the conversation like it's just going to be it's going to be a weird phrase <laughs> yeah i'm surprised by the pleasantness no no <laughs> you gotta you know you gotta hide that negation and just let it be bright but it's, it's fine yeah 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 I find myself curious how you feel about like poetry or fiction or stories. Oh yeah. Um, I think poetry and story come out of binds. Like there's mm -hmm. a, you know, like a double bind. Mm -hmm. uh, it's like, I think those are like fundamental structures to like fundamental. They're like the fundamental knots that are in us. And like a lot of the negation and kind of reaching this kind of arises from those, you know, bubbled up at different levels. Poetry is really interesting because it feels like for me, it's always come from like when the system is like so over constrained, there's so many rules. Like the only thing that can break forth is like poetic mm. because it, it, uh, it, it just is completely separated from like the base reality. It's just kind of its own image and metaphor thing. It's similar to like a dream or like an image that's like breaking through. Um, it, it, yeah, like I, I, I like poetry of that kind of lot. And I found I, I wrote a lot of poetry before, like I was Christian. And then like, I haven't written poetry in a while. And my tweets have not been like creative in a while. But that also feels fine, because everything's smoother now. And doesn't feel like it's like there's so much tension that needs to be sublimated into like some kind of massive creative expression. It's like, oh, no, there's, there's something different happening now. Um, and it's, it's, I think the way I engage with the world is like more creative in itself, or like the path I'm on feels more creative and I'm not like bound up by that. So it's, it's, um, yeah, I think I, po poetry is very related and short story are very related to like constraints and like, how do you speak when there's lots of constraints? It's like, Oh, that's why you get prophets or that's why you get like mystics and poets. It's like, cause everybody else is living in constraints and then somebody's trying not to, their brain gets broken open and it's like, ah, that's just what's left to come through. Hmm. So there's a, whole swath of reality that can't be expressed that there's like this energy that's sort of tensed up and poetry frees you to be able to speak that or story lets you express that and oh, yeah. sort of free the constraints from the system. I found I was writing like a lot of parables and short stories and like poems and making art when I was like coming out of Christianity too, or like mm. constructing my relation to it because I was trying to communicate things to my friends and they couldn't understand me or they were mm. like arguing 
was like, oh, I have exhausted every possible uh -huh. op except like some kind of creative act. So remember, I would I had this one friend guy I was friends with. We were like really tight, like through school. Um, and like he was he didn't understand anything I was going through. So like I just wrote a bunch of poems and I'd send them to him. I was like, this is more true than anything I could I could tell you. And it's like this is kind of what's happening. And, like this is the thing. Like I I made him an art project once that was like a lot of these little he, he messaged me this thing that was like something like I am. So I, I, I printed off a hundred copies of it and I burned the edges and I stuffed it with like some something else pine cones in an envelope and then i wrote like like a, a chapter of the bible and i just mailed it to him and i was like this this is this, this creative expression of like go go you're wrong go fuck yourself or like you know, this, i have no words to say this anymore so i'm just gonna kind of make this do this poetic act huh. yeah i love that yeah i i guess i well one i ask because fiction is one of the things i'm most obsessed with right now but two I could imagine what sounds like an alternate version of you it does not sound like this is what you see, but being like, oh, like poetry or story are not smooth, that they're they're um, twisted or they're built on fabrication or a lie. And certainly pe people have had this perspective philosophically at different points in time, but um, it doesn't sound like that's how you see it. No, I, I don't. I, I think they're ruptures through the fabric and they're bits of like, the dream world leaking through they're a bit uh -huh. more they're a bit more pure than what we have uh -huh. they exist kind of a little floating above it uh, uh -huh. yeah yeah the internal experience right now i'm working on two novels in parallel and and i have no i have very little conscious understanding of like why i'm writing about the specific things that i'm writing about they're not like something i would have been like oh this is what I want to write a story about because it's cool or something. Um, but internally, when I'm writing these stories, it feels like the most important thing and like that I'm getting at something or touching something that I'm not really able to access through another venue. Yeah. Yeah, I, I find uh, another angle on those, I think, is I find... Um poetry and short story to generally be like ahead of where I am in life. They're kind of predictive almost. They're like dreams or they're like um, bits of things that are not integrated. They're kind of up here, you know, it's like, it's so funny. Like I wrote a bunch of poems uh, two summers ago and like so many of the things were just like predictive of what the next two years would be like. It was just like, Oh, these were just on the forefront and mm. that was, you could do it. And then they sink through and then they pass the logical layer and you can talk about them. And they pass another layer and then you can't talk about them anymore and they're hmm. gone um so it feels like the same motion of like how does stuff enter reality is like the same as symbols it's the same as dreams it's the same as images it's the same as like poetry short story like i wrote some short stories last year and i was or, and i was like oh that what a creative person i am this is so cool whatever and then i'm like oh shit fuck this is what i'm going through in life like eight months later and it's like ah oh hmm. <laughs> this is just my the subconscious early warning sign of some change happening. It was like, ah, it came out as a short story. Yes, you're very clever. <laughs> <laughs> you fix uh, your shit. No. Uh, uh, yeah. Wow. I don't yeah. suppose you published those short stories. Some of them, yeah. Um, uh, yeah, there's one I published. Oh, let me take that back. I would like to read them if I can. <laughs> I'll, I'll send you some links. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Good. Well, I've so enjoyed this and I am going to be chewing on the things that we've talked about for some time. And I already see this influencing my speech acts and I foresee that continuing. So thank you for sharing your story and your experiences with language with me. Yeah. Thanks for having me on. It was good. Talking. <laughs>